I think someone took the wrong turn, and that's why the car suddenly swerved so hard, and you see me literally go sideways like that. That was not choreographed. That was an accident. <laughs> Tomorrow never dies. I will never forget when I was playing Wei Lin, someone said to me, just enjoy it. You're in a Bond movie. You don't have to take it so seriously, which in a sense is true because there are so many things going on. But then we all also knew you have to take it seriously because if your character, you're not convinced with your character, you can't deliver the sincerity of a character. Nobody will believe what you are playing or what you're trying to tell them. Ready? Go! The producers who understand how important the legacy of Bond is to the audiences around the world and how to maintain and expand, because it was always very much the man's world, right? All the guys love to be James Bond. And the women were all, almost always the Bond girls. Uh, but they were ready at that time when they came looking for me was uh, to have much more depth uh, in emotions and the quality of their uh, nature in the film. Here, allow me. Don't get any ideas, Mr. Bond. Maybe we go after General Chang together. Thanks for washing my hair. I work alone. I was very blessed that that was the, the train of thought going through their minds when they were writing Tomorrow Never Dies. I will never forget my first experience meeting Barbara Broccoli, one of the main producers, the most amazing, strong, powerful woman. I think because of her, that kind of character, that strong woman was pushed very much far forward in the front. Because of my background coming from having done a lot of stunt work and actual fighting and things like that, Barbara and Michael Wilson were very smart. They said to me, bring your stunt team. It was a great experience for them because it, it was a luxury too. Because normally in Hong Kong, we don't have time to uh, rehearse. For us actors, we get on set, we learn it and we shoot it. So I remember when my guys came, Barbara said to me, what, where's your son team? And I'm, I'm like, I went looking for them. And they were all in the green room. I was going, guys, come on, what kind of example are you setting? You know, they, have, they sent you the mock-up of the set to Hong Kong, like weeks before you were supposed, and now that you get here, you're all just lounging. They said, well, we have five different ways. Which one do you want? <laughs> because they'd seen the set in the mock-up, so they understood the layout. So when they actually came to the layout, they went, okay, we know exactly what we're doing. They said, I'm waiting for your director to come to show him the five different setups. So that's the speed that they work. Barbara and Michael, my producers, were more comfortable because they could see that we work together and we know each other and they would keep me safe. But if not, it would have been very difficult for them to say, why is she on the second floor and there's no harness, you know? <laughs> that was a great experience for both sides to, to see how the East works in that way when we, we don't have the, the, that kind of money or the kind of time, you know, to, to have long setups. But we work efficiently and very, very quickly. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon is poetry in motion. And it's Ang Lee, his vision, his passion for martial arts, which when I first met him straight after um, Tomorrow Never Dies to talk about Crouching Tiger, all these martial arts movies, the Kung Fu movies as we call them, is something that we all grow up with. It's like our Marvel comics. And he was so fascinated, he wanted to try out every single form of martial arts and every weapon there was. I thought he was kidding. When I first walked into his, where he was prepping for all this, the research he was doing, I seriously thought he was kidding until when I walked onto the set on the final fight sequence and all the, 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 the weapons were there and he said, I want you to use all of them. I'm like, you're kidding, right? <laughs> but he was not. He never jokes around with things like that. The 
we always say there is no um, action without drama. It goes hand in hand. You're talking about the emotional feeling. 好，说翻脸就翻脸。The drama of the fighting is the story, and that is the storyteller telling you this is the conflict between these two women over the sword, and that's very symbolic of the man. I think in any movie as well, even for Tomorrow Never Dies, when you have the most incredible explosions, you know, planes and motorcycles and things like that, the drama of it, the closeness of the two characters, that makes you believe the urgency, the the reason for why why they are doing that. Police Story Three, Super Cop. Personally, it was a very important、uh, movie at that time because I had moved away and retired from the film business for about three, four, four years. Police Story Three: Super Cop was my first comeback, so it was important to remind my audiences, "Hey, I'm still here, and hey, I'm I'm still, you know, what what you loved before." <laughs> And then I was getting to work with Stanley Tong, the director, who I met when he was a stunt man. And so he came to me and said, "I have a Jackie Chan movie, and I want you to be part of it, like his counterpart." Okay, it was like playing with James Bond opposite them as their equal. That was a very huge statement on every level. For me, it was a great privilege. For the women, it was like, yes. I will never be crazy enough to do to do those stunts again. Well, we did have an accident, but I was fortunate. I came out of it not hurt. We don't really rehearse our big scenes. If you're going to do it, you might as well shoot it. Right? So let's not waste it. So I get up on the truck, dodging the bullets, rolling off the van, and I go off the van. And Jackie pulls up in his. Little convertible, and I land on his bonnet. I crash the windscreen, which saves my fall, and then I roll off his car. And I go, "Oh, that looks okay. I can just, you know, roll down." And then you're standing up there, and you go like, "Oh, this feels a little different. Way it's not staying still." And then his car is not staying still either. Everything is moving. And I remember in my head, I went, "Well, I'm never gonna know until I try it, right?" So I took the roll. Everything went wrong. The windscreen did not shatter. The things that were supposed to make it go, it didn't. So Jackie couldn't get a handle on me. When you look, watch the outtakes. He scrambled over the windscreen and tried to hold on to me. Luckily, he he grabbed onto a bit of my shirt as I was sliding off the car. He saved me, I think, my life. Shh, but don't tell him that. And as I rolled off, if He didn't give me that little extra jerk. I could, I would have landed on my head first, and that would have been the disaster of my life. You know the saying: when you fall off the horse, you have to get back right on. For me, at that moment, was like, I know what I didn't do right. Now I know the feeling. Let's do it. Try and catch it this time. Suddenly, when you be Jackie, it's okay. It's okay. She said it's okay. Get back in the car. <laughs> so we turned around and we did it. In the next take, that was crazy, but you know, don't do it. <laughs> so at that time, I did take more risks than usual, like you know, hanging on the van. I think someone took the wrong turn, and that's why the car suddenly swerved so so hard, and you see me literally go sideways like that. That was not choreographed. That was an accident. <laughs> Jackie was the one who had a bigger problem. He actually came up to me at one stage and he says, "Michelle, are you trying to kill me?" And I'm like, "No. Why would I do that? We're buddies, right?" And he goes, "No, because I was doing this crazy motorcycle stunt, right?" When he saw me do that stunt, he was like, "Oh no! If you do anything more than that, where am I going to come from?" <laughs> That's why he did the helicopter stunt. It's not fair for me to suddenly go, "Nah, nah, nah. Look at me." <laughs> So we had to have a little bit of a balance, and I think we managed to 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 do that quite well at the end of the day. So that's why we're still great friends.
Crazy Rich Asians from the book. The, the mother is just an antagonist. She was very more superficial. Being able to work very closely with John Chu, I had asked him at the beginning, what kind of movie are you making? What's the tone of your film? Is it going to be like a hangover too? Which is a very legitimate question because if you read the book, it very much reads like that as well, right? It's fun, it's crazy, it's out there. If he said that, I would have said that would have been a wasted opportunity to show in depth with real emotion, sincere integrity, what this culture is. And that was such a great opportunity because we hadn't had an all China Asian cast, I think since Joy Luck Club. I wanted to be part of it, but I didn't want to be part of something that I didn't believe in. John Chu said to me, if I did that, my mother would kill me. Bang. If you understand what your mother thinks, you have, there's a lot of that in you. Pursuing one's passion. How American. Well, your mother is very open-minded. Not like here, where parents are obsessed with shaping the life of their children. He said, I grew up with understanding the hierarchy in family, the filial piety that we have to show to our elders, how to greet, not just who to greet, but how to greet when we sit down for dinner, who starts to eat first and who you have to address, you know, and greet. So he understood the cultural, the real cultural, and not just a superficial, you know, I don't want to know about my history or culture or where I come from. That gave me great confidence that he would understand why this mother character was so important. Because initially, she only appears not that many times. In fact, with her son, only twice. Some things I need to figure out on my own. Is that an American accent I'm hearing? <laughs> Perfect. But in those moments, you have to feel the love, that strong bond and connection. If you don't, then what is the reason for, for him to go back to, to Singapore, right? There must be something that will always pull him back. And that's love of a family. That's keeping a family together. For me, that was a very, very um, important role. You don't know me. I know you're not what Nick needs. The mahjong scene, a battle of wit without the fists, the tiles, that sound, the clickety-clack, you know, that tempo, that rhythm. The women telling each other what they feel and why they are going in that direction. It was beautiful, but it was powerful. There were many days when I wondered if I would ever measure up. But having been through it all, I know this much. You will never be enough. Everybody loved the line when I said, you will never be enough. <laughs> Everybody's always very scared when I say that. <laughs> John Chu said, you terrified me. <laughs> but I think what I loved most about was the reaction to that character. I had young people come up to me and say, I understand my mom better now. Or I understand my mother-in-law better now. I can go back and have a conversation with my mom now. And I think that was very important. When I approach, it's like, I have to know the character. Where is she really coming from? She was dutiful, she was loyal, she was fiercely devoted to her family, but most of all, that was love. That was real love. The general mother's role, to nurture, to protect, but then the most important is to let go. And I approach it like that, knowing these are the feelings that a mother would have so that when I am there as Eleanor Young, I am a mother. I am just simply a mother who loves her son. Everything, everywhere, all at once. I always try not to inject me into the character because I see the character as a real person who needs to have real emotions, uh, a path. What I saw in Evelyn was a very hard-working immigrant who's trying so hard to be keeping her family together, to be a success in her, her father's eyes, to prove that she's a good daughter. And I see Evelyn in so many people around me. I felt that uh, need to tell their story, but in a very, um, not the, the, the usual way, because the Daniels presented it in such a psychedelic <laughs> crazy, insane, contemporary way. Sometimes in science fiction, 
that's where you can really go to the stars and across the universes like we have done and still be credible and believable because this is the universe that we have created. I think that was the challenge. And it, it kept me as the actor grounded because I felt this character. And because every day when I go onto the set, I'm like, okay, sometimes I have no idea. We are jumping from one universe to the other one. The chaos at that moment of filming is also what the character was going through. Evelyn was going through. Evelyn was confused, was fractured. She was trying to come to terms with what was happening with her. It was like taking a look at your own life and going like, am I a failure? Am I this? Am I that? Could I have done better? Maybe that is one thing that I do put in, taking from my experiences, because it is very personal. Not every decision that you make is going to be the perfect one. And that's when mistakes hopefully makes you wiser and smarter and don't do it again. And if you do it again, that means you're really dumb. <laughs> For me, this whole journey was about Evelyn, the character, who understood she will never give up. That also reflects on me as a person uh, because I refuse to give up. I think when you give up or give in, you've already lost. Whatever it is, it's the character. And if you find that character and you connect, you're almost living vicariously through that character. That's when you really love what you're watching or feeling. In everything, everywhere, all at once, my God. I think it has to start from the moment I got the script. Fortunately, I was coming to LA, met with the Daniels, had to meet with the Daniels, because I would only take on a project if there is real passion. If when I speak to them, I see the passion in their eyes. I hear it in coming from here, because I'm not gonna go and leave my family and people I love for three, four months at a time on lip service, on doing something that even you don't believe in. How are you gonna convince me to be part of that? So when I met them, I didn't tell them. <laughs> because when I read the script, I thought, this is something, oh dear. No, this is something I've been waiting for, for a long time. That's going to give me the opportunity to show my fans, my family, my audience, what I'm capable of. To be funny, to be real, to be sad. Finally, somebody understood that I can do all these things. 